so this is the labor level entries so now this part is done we if we we are done with this part we have defined the uh, uh this uh, the common thing so this is the common thing so now we are going to add individual entries for each labor level so for this so for this i have to go to my organization setup i am under labor level entries so you see this is the first labor level over here so it says company right only when i uh, uh, use this drop down it will show me all the other uh, uh, labor levels so when i am in a different labor level it it doesn't make any change on the page but when i click on search it does so when i want to make sure that uh if i want to make sure that i'm adding a entry to a particular labor level i have to make sure i click on search otherwise uh, you will end up adding entries to different other accounts so for example let me just add uh, add these entries so in company i have bank theater and healthcare right so let me just add this uh but before that i'm going to go here and click on all to make sure that i don't have these already added okay i do have one for bank so i don't have to add it again i'll just use this uh so this column is nothing but if you want to make something inactive so your company is deciding that uh, this entry is not needed anymore so you're not supposed to delete it you're just you're just uh, allowed to inactivate it so this could already be there for an employee so when you delete it that uh, employee even though he might be terminated he could end up losing his information so promos is also very important um, in in the aspects of auditing so more often you will get a request from auditing people asking you to send you reports on some employees as to you know how many hours they have worked or what is the pay code they have uh, gained etc uh, i don't know why but the, the, the we do get these requests so that's why we are not supposed to delete any labor level entries or pay codes within the system so as a matter of fact we are not supposed to delete anything at all in the system if you have an option to just leave it as it is as long as it does not affect anything else that's fine or if you have an option to inactivate it you can just inactivate it so with labor level entries you can always inactivate it so i have already have a i already have a bank i already have a hospital and i need to just add a theater i don't have a theater so let me just add a theater so uh, this is the place to add a new entry i'm going to add a theater over here theater and add to the list so now it's added to the list i'll save this so now let me go to the uh, second labor level in the second labor level i have asia australia europe and all asia australia okay i think this is fine asia australia is fine so let me go to the third labor level uh it says india china perth sydney etc okay i have india i don't have perth sydney so let me add perth add to the list sydney sydney add to the list okay i'll save this so now we are done with three labor levels we are going to the fourth one uh, so when you work in uh, real time you no know, you'll have a lot of entries to do this is done manually at the start because this is very crucial so they'll ask you to do this uh, manually so the fourth one is i have admin sales and service do i have admin sales and service no i don't so let me add admin okay i've added admin sales and service okay uh, the name doesn't satisfy the length limitations minimum 1 and maximum 20 so remember the first page where i said minimum is 1 and 20 and it will allow you to overwrite so this is where i give okay uh, now it's going to overwrite it for me so i'm going to save this okay so department is done now i have cost center i mo i'll mostly have this number already added but let us just uh, check i have 1 2 3 that's good let's go to job mm i have a nurse manager let us go back to job 
I need nurse manager and it's already added. I'm not going to add the rest of the things. So now this part is done. Uh, let me just create a new uh, employee or I'll just uh, duplicate, I'll, I'll create a new employee. I'm going to click on people and add. Uh, but again, in real time, you'll not be adding new employees. I'm just doing this to demonstrate how licenses work and how I'm going to add a labor account. So you see, when I click on a new employee, this is the page that I get. So I have a license page over here. So these are all grayed out. So which means I cannot add all these options. So I have only this option and this option to add. So your workforce timekeeper is your basic license. So only if I add a timekeeper license, I can have an employee in Kronos. So without a timekeeper license, I cannot uh, have an employee in Kronos. So, uh, so there are different types of employee activities. Uh, some managers just manage their employees. So those employees do not log into Kronos. Some employees log into Kronos and they'll be able to add their own hours. Some employees will be able to log into Kronos and just check things, but they'll not be able to uh, add anything to Kronos or to their time cuts. So these are all access related, but these are the types of uh, functions that your employees can perform. But in order for an employee to be in Kronos, your license, your first one is your timekeeper license. So if I activate timekeeper, these are all some uh, extra sweet options that we have. So you can use if you have if you want to have activity scheduler, you can just add on these. But timekeeper is the most important one. So with timekeeper, you can add an accrual profile. And also uh, a payroll. So a payroll is nothing but generally how we are going to pay that employee when he works on a holiday or when he doesn't work on a holiday, when he works overtime. So all those rules are your payroll. So in order to add a payroll and to add a primary labor account, you need your timekeeper license. So that is the first and foremost thing. So once you enable your timekeeper, you will have your options to uh, you'll have your options to enable your employee. So workforce employee is for uh, employees who just want to log in and do some basic work. Manager license is available only to uh, managers. So I did create some profiles for you. I have created uh, profiles for you. Uh, Guan, I didn't know your uh, last name, so I just added X. So do you mind sharing your last name with me? just uh, normal employees. I mean, uh, you are managers, so you don't need access to employees or like you don't need an employee license or a timekeeper license because uh, uh, you're not your time card is not going to get uh, ha your time card is not going to have any uh, items at all. So you're simply going to manage other people in the system. But if you want to have your own time cards, then that is when we'll give employee license. But this is now grayed out because I have not given a timekeeper license. So uh, I'm, ex I'm going to explain your manager profile. So this is a normal manager profile. So when you give somebody only a manager license, these are the options that they have. So they have access profiles, which means um, uh, what type of access they can have. So you all have super access, just like me. So you can look at everything. You can make changes to everything. And then you have manager role general, which means this is the place where I'll tell which employees you can access which pay codes you can access, et cetera. So this is not available to somebody who has just a timekeeper on an employee license. So these are the, these, these are the differences. So let us now create a normal uh, person, normal uh, person with just a timekeeper license. Uh, I'm, I'm going to reiterate this. So there are three licenses, basically. We are workforce timekeeper, workforce manager, and workforce employee. Uh, workforce timekeeper is the basic license for your employee to be in Kronos. They cannot log into Kronos, but you or your, uh, you like as a consultant, you or uh, managers who have access to the employees, supervisors who have access to the employees can look at that employee's uh, information and time card and etc. So the, that person will just be using their badge or biometrics to just swipe in, swipe out. You will be able to see the in and outs. So only if I activate my timekeeper, I can uh, activate my workforce employee. So workforce employee is given for an employee to be able to log into the system. 
is just an employee not a manager so with workforce employee what happens is that person will have will have the ability to see their own in and out etc so and the third one is manager so you can also give somebody manager and employee so in this case what happens is this manager can also use a badge to swipe in and out and they'll have their timekeeping and uh, employee related items processed in addition to being able to manage their departments or their uh, reportees um clear this is clear okay so now i'm just going to give somebody only timekeeper license because i just want to test uh, my rules my, my job as a consultant is to gather the requirement create the rules apply to employees test it so let me just uh, create somebody So I've added uh, some date uh, in the past so that I'll have at least uh, one or two weeks back to test my rules. So this is my employment status, like as of when my uh, Kronos account is being active. I'm just going to change all of these. So when I add somebody, these are the informations that I need uh, generally. So there's no user information because there is no employee related uh, role. So I'm going to job assignment. The first place is I have to go to primary account. So this is the place where I have to add the labor account. So this person is a nurse according to me. So let us just uh, select it. So as and when I type, you can see the labor account being created here. So this person's company is uh, healthcare. Okay, uh, I made a mistake. So I didn't uh, activate. hospital is inactive or let me just add healthcare let's see so let me just go back to people editor search company Healthcare. So now we see all these slashes over here. So we're just going to fill all these. So the second thing is she's in Australia. She's in a facility called Sydney. And she's in service. And the next one is. Uh, She's in training. Okay, there's no training. So let me just add some show or. Um, okay, there's no training, so I'm just uh, leaving it blank. I'm going to add a cost center, one, two, three. And then she's a nurse. So oh, this is this person's labor account. So Jack Rose is this uh, is in this location in this. Uh, basically, this is their work. So this is how I'm going to track their labor account. So this cannot be put in a past date. I'll just save this. So without a primary labor account, I cannot save this uh, employee at all. So this uh, that's mandatory. So when you're adding an employee with the timekeeper license, you have to give them a primary labor account. Don't have to necessarily fill all the seven labor levels, but you have to give at least a few, a meaningful few. So any questions, any questions so far? We'll just go to time cards. We'll see if this no. person's time card is active. Okay, great. So, okay, so this person does have time cards. So I think we can start applying the rules and uh, we can we can look into the rules, etc. So there are different uh, tasks that we do within the system. So this is this is one such task. I've already created labor level. So you just have to, uh, you know, navigate and uh, just make sure that they're all there in the system. So once you are done with your uh, labor levels the next thing is your labor level sets but i will uh, come back to this when we when we work with access uh, access profiles 
okay so this is your first uh, step in your setup